Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we are making a potted meat. Specifically, we're making rillettes. Potted meats are a type of preservation where you use fat to preserve your meat and keep it out of the fridge and freezer. It's a really fun, very old school method, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I removed the breasts already, and I'm curing those into a duck breast type prosciutto. That'll be delicious. The rest of this is going to turn into rillettes. First thing I'm gonna do is just remove this skin. If it was a really good pluck, I would leave the skin on, but alas, I did not get a very clean pluck on this guy. So I'm gonna take the skin off and I'm going to render it separately so I can strain out any little remaining feathers. You can get this mostly done by just running your fingers through the middle of the skin and the meat, but you'll definitely need to use your knife in a few parts. Just try not to cut into the meat. Skinning is an absolutely unnecessary step if you have a clean pluck on your bird. The only reason I am skinning is because I didn't wanna waste the fat and I did not have a clean pluck on the bird. If you have a clean pluck, you can use whole bird as is. He's ready for the crock pot. We're just gonna put him in there. Now I'm gonna get some onion in there and it does not need to be chopped fine. We're gonna remove the onion at the end. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quarter this. Some sage and bay leaves, but again, you guys can totally do whatever flavors float your boat. Now we just need a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna use some allspice. We're also going to need a little bit of liquid. You can use some pre-made stock. I'm gonna use some plum wine again today. You could also put in some other rendered fat that would work too. Now we're just gonna get this in the crock pot. We're just gonna go slow cook, normal, probably three to five hours. Just check on it and when the meat is coming off the bones easily, it's time to move on. It's been about four to five hours and our duck looks like it is plenty cooked. So we're going to take it out and just let it cool down a little bit so that we don't burn our fingers off. I'm going to just use my hands to remove all of the meat that I can from the bones. When we've got all the meat picked off the bones, we can set the rest of this aside to make soup within a little bit. And we'll move on to the next step. I left the broth over here in the crock pot to stay warm. And you could ladle it straight out of here, but for educational purposes, to show you guys the fat, I'm gonna strain it out. And of course I can't find my strainer, so we're improvising. The amount of fat that we got off of this bird is fantastic. That is what we're looking for. You need to do this with something that is relatively fatty so that this preserves properly. We're just gonna take two forks and shred this just like you would pulled pork. When you've got it shredded to the point that you like, we're gonna add some of this broth. You want it to be fairly well saturated, so. You just wanna make sure you leave yourself enough fat to top your jars. We're gonna use the fat to actually seal this off. So if you need to use a ladle or something, get a little more of that broth from underneath, reserve yourself that fat. Now is also the perfect time if you want to taste it to adjust your seasonings a little bit, and then we're ready to get it in jars. As you fill your jar, push it down and get all the extra air bubbles out if you can. 
this is about as full as you want to get it. Leave yourself a good inch of head space for your fat cap. Now, lastly, we're gonna ladle some of this beautiful rendered fat to seal our jars. Now you can do this process with other types of meat as well, even lean things like rabbit. And what you'd want to do in that case is you'd want to either add chunks of lard or tallow, some kind of fat while you're cooking it and let it cook in the fat, or you'll at least need to render down or remelt some already rendered fat at this point to cap your jars with. Now, conventional storage says that these should be kept in the refrigerator for a few weeks. However, historically, and what I do is I use sterilized jars. I make sure I have a really heavy fat cap on these and I keep them in my cold room or refrigerator for up to six months. And again, I urge you use your best judgment. If you're uncomfortable with it, don't do it. But yeah, I've had wonderful results with these lasting a very long time and they are super delicious. You could just spread them on toast, eat them with some charcuterie, eat them out of the jar with a spoon. Um, we love them on potatoes, like fried potatoes with rillettes on top. So wonderful. I'm just gonna let those cool a little bit and then put lids on them and move them into my cold storage. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that it was fun and enjoyable. I'm working my way through a harvest of ducks, so there will be more duck videos coming your way. There's going to be some pate, some cured duck breast, duck foot soup. So definitely keep an eye out, and as those are released, they'll be added to the end screen and linked in the description as well. All right, thank you guys again. Give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with a friend if you'd like, and I'll see you next week.